Hello, welcome back to Happy Applecore Homestead. Today, aha, we are going to be canning carrots. Look at all these glorious carrots. Pretty, huh? Okay, we're gonna start by taking the leaves off the carrots and then we're gonna scrub the carrots. You don't have to throw these away. You can eat them. Yeah. Or in my case, the chickens are gonna eat them. I'm gonna go ahead and get this finished up and I'll see you for the next step. The carrots are all clean now, see? Nice big bowl. And the next thing on the list is to um, cut the tops and the bottoms off and peel them. I don't think you have to peel them, but it's my preference, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Obviously, you know what that looks like. Like, actually. Let me get a bigger carrot. It's easier to show that on video. kind of hungry right now, so I just want to eat it, but I won't. Now you get to decide how do you want to cut them. You can cut them into spears, you can cut them in coins with a knife. If you want the crinkle effect, you can use one of these. Um, not really sure if you can see the crinkle effect. Bring it over here. You can see the little crinkles in there. I don't know. Lots of different ways you can cut your carrots. Just kind of depends on your preference. All right, sorry for talking with my mouth full. These are nummy, by the way. Head and tail them, peel them, cut them, throw them in a bowl, and once this whole big giant bowl is done, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, see you in a bit. Now that our carrots have been washed and sliced and they're all ready to put in the jars, we're going to get the canner set up and ready to go. Uh, first thing you want to do is inspect your canner lid, make sure there's no food or gunk in this right here. Um, if you were using your canner, as, your pressure canner as a water bath, make sure you put your plug back in. And um, every season, make sure you check your pressure gauge to make sure that it is accurate. And I've already done all of those things, so now we're going to put in uh, three quarts of water. Check your canner's manufacturer for how much water you should put in, but for mine, that's how much I need. Before you put your water in, make sure you have your tray in the bottom. All right, there's my three quarts of water. And the next thing we're gonna do is make sure that um, your jars and your rings and your lids are all clean and ready to go. Of course, mine have already been sterilized, the jars have, and I just need to wash my lids really quick. We will be using pint and a half jars today. Only seven of them will fit in here, so I'm gonna just wash seven lids for now. And I wash my lids as I go so that I don't inadvertently contaminate them while I'm fussing around the kitchen doing other things. While we're washing our lids, and pulling our, our tools out, you know, our funnel, grab your funnel, grab your jar lifter slash bubble popper, and turn the heat up on your canner. You don't want it to be boiling, but you do want it to be warm. Um, this process takes a little bit of time, and it is really helpful if that water is already warm. Also, grab your kettle. We will be ladling 
pouring boiling water over the carrots. We're doing a raw pack today. Okay, got my kettle full of water. I'm gonna turn that burner on too and get it started warming up. I'm gonna gather my tools, wash my lids, and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. I've got my tools, so my bubble popper, my funnel, wet paper towel for wiping the rings. Uh, I just use water. You can use vinegar if you want to, um, it's your preference. And the jar lifter, outside of screenshot, we've got our sanitized jars, our rings, and our newly cleaned lids all ready to go. The canner is nice and toasty hot. I actually had to turn it off because it was starting to boil and I don't want all the water to boil away before we're ready for it. And my kettle, I can hear it, so it's time to get these jars filled. Now, again, I think I mentioned this earlier, but we are raw packing these carrots. So cold food, cold jars, and yes, we will be putting boiling water into the jar. So pour it in slowly so they don't crack. We're gonna leave one inch of headspace. So you want your food down there below this line here. This is your one inch line. And might take a, one more out. And if you shake them, they're gonna go down all the way. I mean, you can push them, but it really doesn't. They're not gonna go down any further doing that. Yeah, I still feel like that's too many. Maybe we'll leave that one. That one's okay. All right. This is ready to go. And we're just gonna pour this in. Hopefully you're seeing this and not my double chin. Okay, right up to the one inch line it goes. I didn't use my funnel. I guess I don't need my funnel for this. Okay, make sure my water's high enough. Then you'll take your bubble remover, put it all the way down to the bottom of the jar, and press toward the center. And do that in a couple different spots in the jar. And I kind of push the food back down, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Oh, and then we will wipe off the rim. And put the lid on. After that, on goes the ring. And just finger tight. Don't, don't crank it down. Just finger tight is all you need. Use your jar lifter so you don't burn your hands on the steam. And into the canner it goes. And that's the process, so I'm just going to keep running through these until the canner is full, or until we run out of carrots, whichever happens first. Yeah, whichever happens first. Oh, that was close. <laughs> I barely had enough water to fill it all the way up. So, but that's amazing. Um, we did get seven pint and a half jars. 
the last two that I filled are not as packed tight as the other ones because um, I didn't just have quite enough carrots. But that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna bring you over here so you can see what it looks like inside the canner. Hopefully you can still see me. I don't know, my screen is black. Okay, and we're just gonna remove everything else from off of the stove top because the whole thing does get kinda hot. First thing you want to do once you get your jars into your canner is put your lid on. Making sure that your vent escape plug is in the back so that if for some reason um, it needs to use it, it won't pop off in your face because you will be standing here keeping an eye on this the whole time. canner is starting to vent. You can see the steam coming up and so we know it's safe to start our timer. So we're going to start the 10 minute timer now. This will be your last chance for a while to take a break. So if you got to do something real fast that takes 10 minutes, I suggest you do it now. Uh, you can turn down your burner a little bit as long as the venting doesn't stop. I'm going to turn mine down because this burner is crazy. I'll have to tell you guys that story some other time. Uh, also, uh, once the 10 minute timer is up, we will be putting our pressure regulator onto this tube where it's venting from right now, and then we won't be leaving this spot. We have to keep an eye on the pressure gauge, but I'll tell you about that a little bit more when we come back. I am prepared with a stool and a book to just kind of keep me entertained while I keep an eye on this later. But for now, it's break time uh, for nine minutes and four seconds. So I'll see you back then. The timer, the 10 minute timer for venting has gone off and our next step is to place the pressure regulator onto that venting tube. I highly recommend that you use a mitt for that so you don't burn your hands. And at this point, uh, the pressure is start going to start building within the pressure canner, and we will see the gauge move from zero up to 10. Now we are processing carrots. They need to be processed for 30 minutes at 10 pounds, and the 10 is right up here on the top. We are using pint and a half jars here. They are processed the same as quartz, so they will be processed for 30 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. As soon as this pressure gauge gets up, to the, the dial gets up to 10, we will start our timer for 30 minutes. We do not start the timer until it reaches the appropriate pressure. In addition to that, we want to keep an eye on this pressure gauge at all times to ensure that it does not go below 10. If at any time, for some reason, it does go below 10, the entire time has to be started over again, uh, starting at the point when it gets to 10 pounds of pressure. So it really does behoove us to just go ahead and stick close to the canner to make 100% sure it stays at the proper uh, pressure 
for the entire process. It just ensures our food safety. And uh, there's really nothing more important than that in, in canning, right? Is that our food is safe and edible when we're done. And I, I did zoom in on the, the camera. I hope you can see that the dial is starting to come up. I will be turning the temperature of the canner down as it approaches 10 pounds of pressure. Um, every stove uh, is going to be a little bit different. So just keep an eye on it. As we're approaching 10 pounds, I'm going to start turning the canner down a little bit because obviously at, we can tell that at this temperature it's continuing to increase pressure. So we want to just lower that temperature down and slow it down until it rests on the 10. Um, very often for me, especially with this burner which is really whacked out, I don't know what's wrong with it, but sometimes you turn it on low and simmer and it just burns your food. It's very frustrating to me. It's only like four years old. And you may wonder, well, is it a problem if it goes over 10? And the answer to that is no, as long as it doesn't go below 10. Oh, once you start your timer, of course. Okay, we have reached 10 pounds of pressure, so I'm going to start my timer. I'm also going to keep an eye on the temperature gauge here, uh, down here on my stove. It's currently on a just below medium heat and it is still continuing to rise in pressure. So if it gets up into the 11, I'll turn it down just a smidge. I'm careful not to let it go below the 10 and I'll check back in with you after um, the timer goes off. The 30 minute timer has gone off and the only thing we need to do now is pick this up and move it to a burner that's not hot, which is this one. And if you have a glass top stove, be careful to uh, not scrape it. Okay. And all we're going to do now is just simply wait until the pressure gauge gets all the way down to zero. When there's no more pressure in the canner, also this button is going to plop down. At that point, when the pressure is completely to zero, we're going to wait for five minutes and then we're going to take the pressure regulator off. Pressure has been uh, released from the canner at this point. The gauge is down to zero. The pressure indicator has popped down. Next step is to take pressure regulator off and set a timer for 10 minutes. and then we'll take the lid off. Okay, the 10 minute timer has gone off. It's time to open the canner and remove the jars. Make sure you grab your mitts and make sure that when you open the lid, you open it away from yourself and beware that some water will probably come down on the front as well. Grab your jar lifter, because everything in here is still very hot. Remember, don't tip them when you pull them out of the canner. Just lift them straight up and straight down. You want to make sure that there is at least an inch or two of space between the jars so that air can flow through them. 
uh, we're just going to leave them here. We're not going to touch them. We're not going to fuss with them. Um, hopefully in the video you can see they're still boiling in here. Uh, so we don't want to we don't want to mess with them. We're not going to tighten the rings. We're not going to take the rings off. We're literally going to leave them alone for 12 to 24 hours, and uh, then we'll meet you back here and um, see if these all sealed or not. Okay, see you soon. It has been about 17 hours since we took these out of the canner, and now we get to find out if they all sealed. So I'm just starting by pushing down on each one of these to see if they click and they don't. So we're going to go ahead and take the rings off. I don't store my jars with the rings on, so we'll just put these away after we're done here. Okay, and now all we want to do is just going to pick it up and give them a little shake. Make sure that those lids are on nice and tight. And they are. And this one had a little bit of siphoning. I could smell it um, when the canner was venting after, you know, after we turned it, you know, after we took it off the heat. Um, but that's okay. It, they're still covered and it'll be just totally fine. Next we want to get a wet paper towel and just wipe down the jars. They are a little bit uh, sticky. So we'll just get that carrot juice right off of there. All right. Now that those are done, um, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about what these carrots taste like um, doing the raw pack. They're going to be still a little bit firm. Um, you'll want to still cook them, um, probably, if you like your carrots to be soft. These will still be pretty firm. Um, one of the reasons why I love canning them this way is there's this recipe that I love and it's it's got like honey and raisins in it and you bake it with the carrots and it's just oh my gosh it's so good and you can bake these and they won't be too like they won't just turn into mashed carrots uh, next I guess I'm gonna dry off my jars my paper towel was a little bit wetter than it needed to be I guess Now that the jars are dry, we just want to label them and put the dates on. What is today? I don't know. Okay, today is the 15th, so we can these on the 14th. And I like to use these dissolvable labels. They wash right off in the sink when you're done with your jar. <clears throat> um, you may have noticed when we were, you know, getting these carrots into the jars, I didn't put any salt in mine. A lot of recipes call for it, and it's almost always optional. I have never canned my carrots with salt. I feel like um, I prefer to um, add my salt and other spices when I'm cooking them. That's it. We're done. We've got seven pint and a half jars of carrots, and I'm really happy about that. And I hope you enjoy your canning process. Thank you so much for watching my video. And I will see you all soon. Bye.